I was asked to make a video on oiling watches, so I'm just going to run through uh, various types of oils and where you oil on a watch and maybe a bit on technique. So this is my oil cup. Um, I've got a new camera and I've got this on auto, auto focus, so if it goes out of focus I apologize. Um, and I just keep three oils going all the time and mainly use uh, these three types of oils plus one more oil I use that uh, on the escapement um, and I'll show you how I put that on as well and so let's start so oils so I've got uh, we'll say thick thinner and thinnest so I've got the thick oil is the yellow one and the yellow oil here um, is used for the uh, high friction areas of the watch the medium friction areas of the watch is the red oil and the the, uh, the least friction area of the watch is this oil which is I guess blue um, so if I look at the, the way I might oil a watch um, uh, first of all I need an oiler this is an oiler for a watch uh, and let's just get rid of this for a second and have a look at an, oil, an oiler and see if this is able to focus for me and I'll zoom in on this just to see if I can show you the tip of the oiler so this is the oiler here and the tip of the oil looks like a little spoon or a little flattened piece of metal on the end and to grab the oil and <clears throat> this is to retain oil so when you're oiling when you're put, trying to put oil on your oiler uh, let me get in here again because the auto zoom is going to screw me up I think so when I'm putting oil onto the oiler I will if I want a lot of oil in the oiler I will leave the oiler in the oil and then take it out quickly and that will leave a little ball of oil as you can see on the end of the oiler if I want little oil on the oiler, I will move it into the oil um, and then I'll move it out slowly like that and then that'll leave very little on the oiler as you can see. So quickly like this leaves a lot of oil on the oiler and then like so and then slowly like this leaves a little bit of oil on the oiler. So if I'm oiling a larger gear and I want to put a lot of oil on that larger gear on the on the, on the jewel end of that oil of the gear. Then uh, I'm looking at oiling oiling on the jewel, and the jewel is effectively um, sticking through the uh, sorry the uh, the pivot or pin, pivot is sticking through the jewel, and I'm oiling um, in the jewel cup. So if I have a jewel like this. I'm going to see if I can draw here. Let me zoom out. There we go. And move this out of the way and I'll see if this zooms in. Of course it won't zoom in on me. There we go. There's the jewel. There's the cup. There's the hole. There's the other end of the jewel like this. And so I'm placing the oil right here. And there's a gear like this. And there's shaft of the gear going up like this and then there's a, a pivot on the end that's riding through the jewel hole and so the oil goes into the, the cup of the jewel like this and there are other methods of oiling but this, this, this is where the oil not methods but this is where the oil would go for for a, a gear just to show you so so that's the start I'm going to leave that here so so the um, I actually get some focus here so uh, I'll do my best here again I'm not an expert in oiling um, I just play one on TV so again this is the um, the oiler itself and as I zoomed in before it's got the uh, little nubby on the end there to catch the oil and then I use this right pith wood here and it cleans my oil my oil uh, oiler after I'm finished um, I always put the uh, cap back on the oiler and I put it back into my Bergeon um, holder. This is my Bergeon holder and this is where my oilers go. This moves around a bit. I bought this used but I had to use some JB Weld, my favorite stuff, to actually uh, to put it on there. And actually there's a nice little diagram here that shows you the, uh, if you zoom in, if I zoom in on this little diagram maybe, I will use it to show you something. There we go. That's an excellent little diagram. Didn't even know it was there. Amazing. Amazing diagram. 
So there's the uh, there's the pivot on the end, right? And that looks like it might be a uh, upper the upper jewel for the escapement. Like so, you got the balance cock, and then you've got the the escapement coming up. Or the sorry, the balance, right? I, 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 if I make any mistakes, just erase the video, okay? Erase it. So you've got the balance coming up, and you've got the balance staff coming up here, and then you've got the pivot on the end going through, and then the pivot is is effectively riding in the hole of the jewel. And then I've got my cap cap jewel here on top. So the pivot actually touches the cap jewel, and <clears throat> and it uh, fits. Um, ever so slightly into this between the jewel holes so when I oil this I end up taking the cap jewel off and what I typically do is I put a little bit of oil on the cap itself and then flip the cap around and put it back onto the jewel and then that and that oil stays where it needs to stay as opposed to putting oil on the jewel itself and then putting the cap back on that's one technique and then here I've got the pallet fork here and as I said earlier this type of oil, right, is used. Let me see if I can center that somehow. This 9415 oil, Mobius, is used to oil the uh, pallet fork, the jewels on the pallet fork. Um, but the way I do it is I don't oil the jewel itself. I oil the escapement, and the little feet on the escapement then get oiled and I oil four of them. I try to time it when it's going around and I actually oil it while it's running. I'm not sure if that's a good job, a good thing to do or not, but I let it spin like it's working and it goes tick, 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 and then I just dab a little bit of oil, tick, 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 dab a little bit more, dab a little more, and then that catches the, the jewel as it goes around and then ultimately this gets oiled nicely. And that makes a big difference in the amplitude of your uh, watch, your watch and, or, and or pocket watch. I do a lot of work on pocket watches, not watches. I, I do work on watches, but not that often. But your pocket watch amplitude will increase significantly if you uh, if you oil the escapement itself, and so you get the lock and release of the uh, jewels here, and they and they lock and they release a lot better actually. So and then the angle of the of the foot on that escapement pushing that jewel to make this swing, uh, it works perfectly. So it gets oiled nicely. And then the third picture here, I didn't actually think I was going to use these p pictures, but this is pretty cool. This is cool. So I have a gear coming up through here, and there's a shaft of the gear coming through here, and then there's a pivot on the end. And again, you're oiling the jewel on the top, like I showed, showed you down here, the cup of that jewel. And you don't want oil to get onto these gears at all. Um, it's really not necessary to... to to oil the gears because if you do that all of the watch is going to do is collect dust and other stuff and that'll get caught in the gears and then you've got other problems the watch gets gummed up and dirty pretty fast so you end up putting a dab of oil on here and for the gears um, you're using the thicker oil and as I sh showed you earlier for the pivots for these gears depending on which one you're working on um, you're usually using this oil here uh, the what I'll call the red oil and that oil is uh, it's HP uh, 1300 like 1300 HP 1300 and the lighter oil lightest oil is is uh, 9010 so it's uh, and let me show you this oil here so the oil comes let me move this out of the way for a second see just like someone told me they watched the Arnold Schwarzenegger movies and uh, when Arnold tries to describe what happened in the scene or whatever so if you just turned it on and you're wondering why he's trying to get this guy he basically describes the whole scene you know I was in my car and I did this and then oh, and did that and anyway that's the way they give you the backstory but I'm not going to do that right now so this is the uh, Mobius oil here and it's uh, 2021. Thank God I don't have to buy any more of this. Uh, and this is the 9010. So that's the very, very light oil. And I'll show you where you put 9010. And this comes in a fancy, fancy uh, thing here. Let me just zoom out again just so you can see this bit better. Um, so that's it there. And then the oil is here. And this stuff is like gold. It's like 
costs about 50 or 60 bucks for this so it ain't cheap as they say you see up down sideways there we go there it is so it gets in here and it's foam it's kind of like if you had nitroglycerin in the old cowboy movies they used to put nitroglycerin in these containers and then they'd go in a stagecoach and the stagecoach would be going da -da 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 like that and then and then uh, no one ever blew up in the stagecoach for some reason, but they were always skimming the nitroglycerin off the top and uh, and you know, the the surface of this nitroglycerin. And then, it, but this is not nitroglycerin. Okay, it's just oil, so you don't have to worry. I know you were worried, but you don't have to worry. So you got to make oiling entertaining, it's not that entertaining. Then I've got microgliss oil. So this is the, I believe. I'm hoping I don't make a mistake here, but this is the yellow. This is it. This is this stuff here. So this this is also let me see. Yeah, this is the yellow stuff. So this microglass. So that's the thicker oil that's used for the keyless mechanisms of your of your watch, right? That's this is it here. So D5 microglass D5, um, excellent oil, uh, very thick. So you don't want this oil to get into the, the the less friction areas of your watch. So you're using it effectively for these areas of the watch for the keyless mechanism so and I don't have a stem for this silly watch so I'm just going to pretend this is it. it doesn't fit but this would go through here and I would oil I would oil um, a few areas here on this let me get my tweezers out I'll point with my tweezers yeah I would oil the stem here here and here where the gap is and I might put a bit of oil on here because that's where it will ride as it enters into the uh, to the keyless and the pocket wash, right? I would also oil um, with microgliss. I would put some oil right here, right for the winding uh, ratchets, and and I don't usually. And I would also put some oil where there's heavy friction, um, but I don't think I'd put it here because it's because I've got a gear here and I don't want that microgliss caught up in these gears. Um, but if there's, if I'm able to take this off and there's heavy friction on there, I'd put it there for, because of the friction. So, so in the keyless mechanism, I would use this oil here. It's perfect for it. And again, that's the, uh, the D5. So, so where there's heavy friction, because you've got wheels and jewels and you've got keyless, uh, on this side, um, you use the, this, this oil here. Where there's medium friction, you're using this oil here, which is the 9104. I don't think I took that out, so let's have a look at that. This should be the red stuff, and it is. So this is the 9104. So that's for medium friction. Um, and then the very little friction is the uh, Mobius uh, 9010 the stuff here so let's get to the watch itself so I just briefly showed you how you get the right amount of oil onto the uh, onto the watch so let's just look at this keyless mechanism I have here and uh, again I'm gonna have to zoom this thing is it gonna zoom for me come on zoom I don't know what it is with these cameras they they have the zoom issues so there we go that's better so so when I'm when I'm looking at the keyless mechanism, I'm oiling it. Um, I put in I'll say thick, thin, and thinner, right? Or for the for the three three types of oils I showed you. So if I take out take the uh, hour gear out here or the hour wheel out here, and I've got the cannon pinion right here, I do not oil the cannon pinion. So the cannon pinion is friction fit onto the center wheel. I'm not sure if I can lift this out or if I want to lift this out, but if I pull this out here, eh, 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 there we go. I did it. <laughs> World's strongest man. So there's the cannon pinion here, and the cannon pinion actually has to snug on to the to the center wheel. So, and when you're counting wheels on a watch, one is the uh, is the uh, mainspring barrel. So the center wheel is two. Right, and there's an intermediate wheel that's three, and four is the second hand, second wheel, second hand, um, and then I guess five is the escapement. So just counting through there. If I made a mistake, please make a comment. Tell me I made a mistake, and I will eat crow. So, so here's the uh, the cannon pinion here, and the cannon pinion actually has to have friction 
in order to work. So when you're winding the watch, um, the canyon pinion is is not engaged. You're winding the mainspring barrel. So the this I'm missing a wheel here, but this pushes pushes uh, forward to touch this part of the watch here, and then this turns, and then I've got myself I'm winding the watch right. Um, when I'm changing the time, that that actually releases, so I'm not I'm not actually turning the uh, mainspring, and then it turns the uh, cannon pinion, but it doesn't turn the center wheel of the watch. I don't think anyway. It doesn't turn the center wheel of the watch. I'm gonna try to push this back in, um, and I don't. This is a scrap movement, so I'm not too worried about screwing anything up here. So I'm just gonna la leave it like this. It's not pushed all the way in, but I'll leave it like that. Um, so, so in that case, the the cannon pinion here um, will turn and catch the uh, I think the minute gear, and then that will catch the hour gear or the hour wheel or whatever, and that will turn, um, and that will set the time. So when I oil the watch, I do sometimes. Put a dab. Why don't I just call the oils blue, red, and yellow, okay, for the time being, because I told you what they were already. So I would take the the uh, red oil, right, which is a thinner oil, and I, again, I told you earlier what those type, what oil types they were. But I would take the red oil, and I might put a dab of red oil here on the uh, on the on the uh, pinion here of this gear. So. And that would just provide some lubrication here. Um, I wouldn't need to put any oil on on here on the on the side of the uh, of the hour uh, wheel. Um, but 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 it's risky. But I might put a little tiny bit of oil. I'm, gonna, I'm never going to get this off the same way I took it off the first time. I might put a little bit of oil on the edge. Yeah, I'm not going to bother. Put of oil on the edge of the cannon pinion, not on the inside, on the edge. Um, that's pretty risky, though. Edge and low depends on the cannon pinion. This particular cannon pinion I showed you earlier had a little opening in it to allow you to tighten the cannon pinion. And if I did that, the oil would get into that opening, and then it would get in onto the uh, the pinion of that center wheel, and then I'd have the cannon pinion slipping where I want friction there. So the best thing to do is stay away from the cannon pinion area for oiling. Don't do it. Um, there's schools of thought on that but my school of thought uh, I was on the, the uh, watch repair blog and there was a bunch of people talking about it and we all agreed to not oil the cannon pinion so uh, so when I've just again for the back of this watch um, the mainspring here you've got two sides here so you've got the, the the back of the barrel here that fits onto a plate usually uh, so the barrel is underneath here so and then you've got the other side. So here we go. Let's look at the other side for a second. So if these were the jewel holes here, and I'll bring this other watch here to show you maybe for the jewels. Uh, that probably makes more sense. Uh, let's just bring this out. This is a Ruski. It's a Russian watch here. Uh, there we go. And zoom in a bit on this and see if I can center this. There, that's more or less centered. Kind of autofocus it. So in this case, I've got this watch here. I'll, I'll do the mainspring uh, barrel after. But uh, so <clears throat> what I would do here is I've got the the. It's a smaller watch, but if this was a, let's say this is a pocket watch and I've got a ton of friction here, right? I would use the red oil, right? And I would just dip. I would dip that ever so slightly. And I wouldn't. I try not to get too much oil on there because then I have to remove it. So let's just do that. So let's just pretend I put too much oil on that, and I just and I put that in there. So I just oiled that um, the jewel for the center wheel, and I'm like, oh my god, that's way too much oil. What am I gonna do? Oh my god, throw everything away, throw the watch over the hill, um, go get a new watch, sneak it in the house so your wife doesn't catch you. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to actually take a piece of Rotico. This is a little bit dirty, but you take a piece of Rotico here, which is watchmaker's putty, and you go in and you just, and I'm going to try to get up close so I can make sure I do the right stuff here. You just dab that like this, 
Let me turn that a bit, and you can you can remove that oil using Rotico. And I fold the Rotico over again, like just fold it over like this, and then make it into a point again, like so, and then get in there and then dab that again, and that'll allow you to remove the oil because you do not want too much oil. If you put too much oil in, that oil will ride down that jewel, and then it'll ride down the shaft of the center wheel, and then you've got other problems because it's going to get into the the pinions and then it'll follow through the watch and then it'll collect dust so that's the, it's amazing you open a watch up and how much dirt and grime and dust it is and it's supposed to be sealed it's just amazing how stuff creeps in so I really don't know how that's done so I would use that red oil for this particular watch and I might use it on the the third wheel right here um, if it's a, if it were a pocket watch let me bring my old big old pocket watch in here this is like a cheap Trenton pocket watch with no jewels so these aren't jewels but I'd still have to oil them because these are metal I believe they're metal let me look really close here eh. yeah they're not jewels so these aren't jewels um, but this is the uh, one two so mainspring center wheel and then one two three and this is a second hand that would be on the other side I believe and then the escapement would be right here and this is where the pallet fork is and then the balance would be right here so I would use this I would use the infamous red oil let me zoom out again the red oil which is the Mobius um, 9104 9104 or the HP it's also called HP 1300 it's got two names for some reason someone can explain that to me I'd use that on this this wheel and I probably I may or may not use that on the second wheel right on the second hand wheel which is one two three fourth wheel over right so I might or might might not use that I, I think I often use the Mobius the uh, the Mobius 9010 which is the blue oil so I usually use the blue oil Mobius 9010 on the on the second the second hand wheel the seconds hand wheel and then the uh, escapement I would use that on the escapement and put a small dab on that as well and again there's some schools of thought on whether you actually need to use um, any oil at all on the uh, pallet fork um, because this is an old pocket watch and the pallet fork is a monster it is a monster I would typically I would use this uh, in this case on here because of the amount of friction on this pocket watch. It's got a pretty big mainspring, causing a lot of tension between the mainspring and the uh, the pinion that it's riding on here for the center wheel. Um, and because of that, I'm using a thicker oil. So the red oil, red oil, maybe red or or blue oil, blue blue. So that's that's how I would oil that. And again. I would also put some oil here on the mainspring. So this is where the mainspring barrel pokes out through the plate. And what I typically do, I don't put any oil on the when, it, when the mainspring barrel is sitting there on this uh, pivot or whatever it's called. I'm not sure it's called a pivot. It's too big. <laughs> so what I would typically do is use the red oil for that as well, right? So the uh, HP 1300, aka 9104, and I would take a dab of this and I wouldn't I'm not too worried about taking a bit too much on this for the mainspring but I would take a, a dab of that and I would put it right on the edge like this on one side and then in a dab and I pull the uh, the oiler out semi slow here but not not really fast because I don't want a big blob and not really slow and there we go and I just dab it on both sides of that of that uh, of the uh, plate aka the pivot stick for the mainspring barrel it's it's really the arbor so it's the mainspring arbor that's sticking out through here so the arbor pivot or whatever you want to call it um, and i would oil that as well on both sides so and for the center wheel i would basically do the same except i'd only put the oil in in the hole on one side and then that the pivot for the center wheel will, will carry that oil around the uh, circle and some of them are jeweled some of them aren't and then these ones here is it's usually a cup and I'd put a bit of oil I don't want the oil to be to the top of the cup I just want to pull in 
in this case I'm not pulling in super fast because I don't want a big blob I'm not pulling in super slow because I won't get anything so I'm kind of going halfway out like that and then it gives me usually gives me just enough oil to put in there like this and you can look at it and see what oil, how much oil you've put in there and in this case here I do the same and and the cup is getting smaller as well for the the jewel because I'm, I'm going down through the wheels here so one two three four and I oil that as well and then when I get to here I take my I usually grab another oiler a different oiler and hey guess what I got the wrong oiler because usually I use the red oiler for for the red and the blue oiler for the blue and I've got a a yellow oiler for the yellow so I don't make mistakes but I'll just continue with the blue, this oiler for now so I don't have to grab the other ones um, and I would clean that oiler off if I'm switching oils and and go to the finer oil like this I gotta look in a little bit closer here gotta do the golf talk where you talk lightly and I would oil the escapement like this BAM like that so put a bit of oil on that and I think there's oil there we go and then in this case I'd probably oil the pallet fork on the end here so like that so that's that's how I would oil this area of the watch um, just another point here when I get the keyless mechanism um, and I've opened up um, I've opened up the plate main plate here and you look inside here and you see the stem the crown and the stem for the for the watch like I said earlier I usually I would take this oil here the yellow oil here and I would oil I would oil here a bit here and then a dab here and then when this thing goes in there's some friction on the in here and I'd usually take a, a little tiny bit of oil and I'd put the oil on the wall uh, of when it, so that the uh, stem as it enters provides it's a little bit smoother as it enters um, but not put too much on there again I don't want to collect uh, dust anywhere on the watch right? so so that's fundamentally how I'd oil this part right and now I've taken let's say I've taken the watch apart and I've got myself a mainspring barrel up oh, look at that I just happen to have a mainspring barrel look at that just lucky I guess so I would take that mainspring barrel apart um, and I'm gonna pray for focus here okay let's all pray for focus move my hand in focus the camera and move my hand out of the way oh look at that I saw something so I would snap the cap off this this barrel and I'm just I didn't look at this barrel yet so I'm not sure if this is gonna work but this is like a I'd snap the cap off the barrel I stick in a screwdriver in here and and then there, there we go so that's off and guess what <laughs> there's no mainspring but let's talk anyway so let's just pretend there's a mainspring wound around here and if there was a mainspring wound around here and again if it's a like a Seiko watch or something you don't you don't need to, to do, put any oil in the mainspring but if it's an old pocket watch and again I like to work on pocket watches um, I would typically take the 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 13 the Mobius or the 1300 HP 1300 which is again the red stuff and I would I would put a dab on top of the mainspring and I'd go I just put one two three four and as I put it in I just scrape it so it creates a line on the spring and that and then that'll move around the mainspring and uh, and effectively oil the mainspring and this is for a pocket watch if you have a watch you don't have to do that um, probably most watches you don't have to do put any oil because of the types of springs they have nowadays um, you can clean off the mainspring by stretching it out and cleaning it um, and, and then and then put some oil on it on a cloth and then move the, the oil from the cloth onto the spring by spreading it with your fingers right and there's videos and books on that stuff but in general I do that and then if this is like a uh, an automatic watch and I need to uh, make sure that there's grip on the barrel um, there's other oil for that so let me look at that so so for that I use this uh, 8213 natural grease so this is barrel grease for a mainspring so we'll move all this stuff out of the way so what you do there let me just open this up it's a big barrel and I don't want to move my camera around 
this is what it looks like so it's kind of it's called it's it's called natural grease and it probably comes from the movie grease uh ha uh -huh. and <clears throat> anyway it's natural grease and there's the uh it's 8213 and so for this grease again you take an oiler and a pretty thick oiler so i'd be using my yellow oiler big fat yellow oiler and i'd be taking some of that grease like so and i'm not getting this to focus very well and put my hand in there get some focus focus so there we go and i'd be putting it on the wall of the uh, of the mainspring barrel here 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 and here and just applying a bit just a touch on four places in the wall and then what happens is the in a an automatic watch let me clean clean the grease off of this because i'll end up putting it on a, a pocket watch just stab that i need another piece reach over and my oh mysterious pieces of there we go so clean that off uh, put the cap back on it and so what happens on a uh, on a pocket on a automatic watch a fully automatic watch is the um let me get a piece of paper out and quickly try to describe it uh, there's my pen my pen so you end up with the barrels like this and then the watch spring i'm just going to exaggerate it goes like this sort of thing and then it gets to a point here and then it's folded back so you've got to fold back like that and then so when this pulls in this direction right this this folded back with this this wowsy wowsy grease here this provides just enough friction for for it to um, stay on the wall of the uh, of the barrel providing resistance and as the mainspring arbor turns this way and the majority of the spring starts to gather around the arbor and you have less of the spring on the outside pushing outward towards the wall then this all this grease will keep this this the mainspring uh, where it's supposed to be until the force of the spring uh, versus the friction of the uh, of this piece of metal against the barrel wall releases that and then it slides and that prevents you from overwinding or breaking the main someone said there's no such thing as overwinding but if you wind the crap out of an automatic watch and at some point in time the spring will be in the situation where this has to slide so that's where this this particular uh, natural grease uh, fits in and there it is there so it's also mobius um, i buy only buy the best only buy the best if you're going to buy oils so that's the use of that so and i've got i already did the micro gliss the d5 for the keyless mechanisms earlier so that is the d5 let me zoom 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 there whoop look at that that's my zoom trick so <clears throat> that's the micro gliss and that's for the keyless mechanisms um and i showed you how i dab it onto the jewels uh so the other thing is as i said earlier let me move some of this stuff out of the way um, you don't need to put any oil around this the the arbor here none at all so when i put the cap on back on here and the mysterious spring is as the spring sprung it sprung away so it's gone my humor is so bad so i'm surprised my wife stays with me so if i put the cap back on here and just squeeze it on with my i typically just pop it on like that and then turn it around and there we go you can hear it click there we go and so that's on and when it's sticking through the plate this is what i showed you earlier on this watch right and see i need the zooming here once again there we go and that's what you end up when the barrel's sticking through and i showed you earlier how you just put a little bit of the uh what i will call the red oil right which is the hp 1300 on there to provide friction right so or to, to reduce friction and again oiling all you're doing to oil the watch is to completely reduce friction uh, between the pivots and the jewels and or the non-jewels that you have here um, to completely reduce friction and the reason you're trying to reduce friction is that the power that you're getting from winding that mainspring and the pull of that mainspring on the outside barrel that power is released through the watch and and if you have zero i can't say zero friction but near zero friction as that as the power is released then you get the pallet fork here will swing back and forth 
like bam 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 or pow pow pow, pow back and forth um, and it will provide it will be it will be pushing the impulse jewel of the of the balance and it pushes it one way and it swings that way and then in the balance impulse jewel uh, is catches the mouth here the pallet fork and then it pushes it again back the other way and you'll get a, a really good amplitude on that which is basically the amount of degrees that the, that the uh, that the balance will swing either way and that amplitude will be excellent um, and the better the amplitude usually the better you can time a watch right and it's more predictable in the amplitude as the as the power is released from the mainspring if you get 50 percent of your power released from the mainspring you're still getting generally the same amplitude and uh, if you get like 90 percent of the release from the mainspring you may still be getting generally the same amplitude only because you have less friction if you're down to 90 percent on your mainspring power and these then the oil is not properly applied here this pallet fork won't swing away swing this way right and 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 to push that impulse jewel to spin that balance and you won't get the amplitude so that's why you don't need to put any oil in the pallet fork here I, I've never done it I don't think you're supposed to do it uh, somebody again can correct me if I'm wrong but I don't put any oil in the uh, pallet fork here the opening of the pallet fork so that's that's that um, uh, and these are these are basically the banking pins here that the uh, pallet fork is going to swing and hit the banking pin and then it'll it'll wait there till the impulse jewel comes around again catch the impulse jewel in the mouth and then this will release over here on the uh, on the pallet fork jewels and then on the escapement and then it'll push it this way and bam bam so but this is not about the theory of how watches work this is a cut of oil so so that's that so so now I'll look at the um, I'm gonna this is the old I'm gonna try to do this so so if I look at this movement here I've got the Russian movement this is I think it is 17 joule movement um, it's one it's just a scrap movement here and and in this case here um, I've got let's see if I can zoom in here again uh, there's the balance balance cock here and there's the uh, the balance itself and that's the upper jewel for the balance the balance staff or goes all the way through there and as I've told you in other videos I actually make balance staffs which is kind of cool that's a whole other discussion but anyway and here what I would do typically I'm not sure if I can do this because it's pretty small and I'm trying to videotape it but what I would do typically I would I could I, I can do this with the balance in place so let's just say I had cleaned the watch completely and I had put the balance in place I had already oiled the the, the jewel on the back side of this watch and I'm going to see if I can see that after and what I would typically do is is take off it would just remove the capsule from this balance I'm going to see if I can remove the capsule without and I got to get really close to do that so and I got to do it the right way so I get this side here and then I would do this side here see if this capsule goes flying then I'd open this up and there we go it just went ping <laughs> wonderful anyway thank god this is a not for tv made movie so and I really don't care about this this actually just rocks up and it holds the cap on top the cap jewel on top and then I have the, the upper balance jewel there and I would typically because it's so darn small I would remove that jewel with a piece of rotico like so eh, there we go and in this case I don't have a lower jewel and I just drop the jewel inside the watch so as you can see right there and when you make videos on doing this stuff you're supposed to show all the errors in there so let's see if I can grab that there we go there's a the jewel there and in this case um, the Russian watch I don't look, work on these type watches um, I don't think I've ever done clean the Russian watch before but in this case here um, the jewel the pivot goes through uh, the balance cock here and just shows itself right there and I would more than likely take my oil like so I would grab some of the uh, look at that zoom zoom ta-da there we go 
This is a Logitech uh, 922 camera. It's a uh, pretty cool. It's not super expensive, but it works well. So I'd, I would not take a lot of oil in this case. I would just put my oiler in like this and then pull it out slowly because I don't want to fill that up with oil. That doesn't make any sense. And then I would go inside and get up super close with my uh, my glasses on and I would just touch the end there like that to apply ever so slight amount of oil on there and I wouldn't try to put the oil on this cap here because that would not be good that would be a disaster I believe anyway Mark can correct me okay because Mark is the expert so I don't even have to Mark love it Mark Lilo it no, I'm just kidding anyway so you'd put this back on like that and like this and then that piece that went bling, that went flying, I would take that piece and then roll that back and snap that on. So that would be that jewel, right? And so, and of course, when I turn this around again, this is going to go flying. And I'll find that piece later. So it's not really uh, important right now for this discussion. Um, and in this case, the, the lower jewel here, um, if I look at the... Uh, I just unscrew this for a second because I don't care about this watch. Let's see if I can unscrew this. It's going to allow me to unscrew it. Yeah. So you unscrew that, and then I got too much stuff here. I got pins, and, and I just screwed up here. Uh, rush, rush, rush. Get these pins out of the way and the screwdrivers and stuff like that. And I probably won't be able to remove this properly, but because it's in a case of some sort here. Uh, but I'm going to try. There we go. And I grab the balance out of there very carefully. Can I do that? Can I do that? I can. And I'll just move the balance out of the way for now. So, and again, focus, focus. Ta da! I'm fooling the camera again. Anyway, I think I put my fingers in there and I don't fool it again. So, there. So I have my lower, the lower jewel here, right here. And that's where the pallet fork is going to swing back and forth and touch the impulse jewel. You don't oil in there. Don't put oil in that hole. Okay, That is not right. So if you were to take this movement apart, you would see on the back end of this movement, and I'm not sure if I can take this apart quickly or not without a lot of work. You'd see on the back end of this movement, um, you'd see a, uh, a jewel on the back end uh, that has a cap on it usually and a couple screws and you'd remove that jewel um, the cap off of it and like I said earlier you'd put a dab of the blue oil which is a 90 90 10 uh, onto that cap and then move the cap the other way and then you're good and then, and then you've you've oiled the lower jewel and you just put a ever so slight amount of oil on the lower jewel right um, you don't need to oil uh, any of the ratchets or mainspring uh, gears here, ratchets. Um, that's not necessary to put oil in there. It's just going to move around and get caught up somewhere else in this watch. So this is focus sucks. Let me just move it up here really close. There we go. So you don't need to oil in here at all. That's not necessary. Uh, like I said, you're just going to uh, cause this to get gummed up and more dust to collect in there. So no oiling required there at all. Um, and you don't need to oil. This is the, uh, there we go. This is the pallet fork, and you don't need to put any oil in the pallet fork at all. Now, the pallet, in this case here, the, the jewel for the pallet fork is here, and there's another jewel on the other side for this pallet fork, and I don't believe you have to oil that jewel, because uh, I think that even though the uh, Mobius uh, 9010 oil is pretty thin, that that compared to the size of the uh, pivot coming out of the pallet fork and the whole jewel size, I don't think you're going to get any any uh, positive result from from oiling that pallet fork, uh, the jewel in the pallet fork here. Now, when like I said before, when you have a monster watch like this one here, uh, it's a different story, right? Because this watch, the the uh, pivot for the pallet fork is actually sticking through the plate here. And there's a cup here, and you should oil that because of the monstrous size of the pallet fork. It's a monster. Um, so, again, um, I'm not sure if I missed anything here at all. Uh, when you put the plate 
the uh, the face onto the watch here and it goes through a couple of holes usually three on the watch you don't need to put any oil there at all um, this is a this is not the uh, mainspring here the mainspring is underneath here and this this is the arbor for the mainspring and it comes through here you don't need to put any arbor on on this either or sorry any oil on this a uh, piece of metal, a square piece of metal that's basically the arbor sticking through. So no oil is required on this side, but you should put oil um, on the other side of the mainspring. Uh, and uh, what else? The uh, wherever, if you move this this the keyless stuff here, and you see that there's <coughs> excuse me, there's springs and these sorts of things. Um, I wouldn't recommend putting oil on the springs because it might slide into place. Um, there are some wheels here that you could put oil on, but they're really small, and so I don't, I don't recommend that. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know what it is, but I somehow, I think I collect dust. I need to, maybe I got too much oil in my throat, and it's collecting dust. <coughs> there we go. So, so I, as I said earlier, one, one last thing, and I, I mentioned it earlier, is that when I'm oiling, let's say I've got to oil... The, and I'm not sure if I can actually show this, but if you look at the watch here, right, and you see, and I'm hoping I get a focus here. It's all about focus. Focus is not just a bad car. It's a, did I say that out loud? I apologize. It's actually a good car. My wife had a focus for many years, and it lasted, I think it lasted 12 years. So if you look really closely, you'll see the escapement in here and the little feet of the escapement and they're touching the pallet fork as this rides back and forth and so that's where i take this <coughs> mobius 9415 and i and i take my finest oiler which is my blue one like this and i take a little bit of that 9415 that mobius 9415 and i apply it to the feet of this uh, of the escapement as it moves around <coughs> anyway, I'm sorry. I got this cough. Too much talking. Too much dust in here. Um, so I apply it to a foot, let it turn a few times, apply it to another foot, and then it'll turn a, time, to a few times, apply it to another foot, and then it'll carry on. It'll carry along to the, uh, the jewels on the balance fork, and then it provides good relief of uh, friction. So it uh, lessens the friction by using this uh, 9415. So <coughs> I think I've covered pretty well everything on oiling. Uh, the types of oil, uh, there's a lot of blogs on, or discussions on which oil is good and which oil is bad and which oil is nice. And so I don't use cheap oil. I use the Mobius, the Mobius brand of oil, which is, uh, costs a lot. <coughs> yeah, and I'm uh, <coughs> losing my voice, so I better shut this video off. <coughs> if you've got headphones on, I apologize for making you deaf. So, <laughs> but anyway, uh, and I should have some water up here, really. So, <clears throat> so I have, um, you clean off your oilers when you're finished. Um, I use good oil. I keep my oilers in this uh, nice little stand that I've got here. I don't want to squish, squish the balance I have sitting here. Balance cock, even though I don't care about it anymore. But it's great for describing stuff. Let's put that over there. So this uh, Bergeron, um, this, this thing here is excellent. So I use that for, um, for oiling. Again, I don't know why I'm getting focus issues, but... There we go. So this is a 2847 I got online. It was just used and <clears throat> picked it up, and uh, it's really good. So I keep my oilers in there. I keep my when I'm oiling, I always put the cap back on the uh, this oiler, this this thing here, thing here. So I put the cap back on that so I don't get dust in there. So to remove that, no dust. Um, I think the trick is to focus like that. You go, oh, like this. It focuses and you move your hand back. So, <clears throat> anyway, so I keep the cap on so I don't have to worry about that. And once I've oiled the watch um, and it's all ready to be put together, I always put a lid on it. And the reason for that is so I don't get dust in if I've oiled it already. Um, once I've oiled this, I put the face back on as fast as I can so I don't get particles sitting in here. Um, I also wear... Uh, Cots, finger cots for your fingers for when you're working on watches. You pretty well have to, you really don't need to put them on both hands, but most of my videos you won't see me wearing a finger, finger cot because I'm just trying to explain stuff. But here it is here. 
and that just this is a, an old one that just rolls onto your finger like that so you don't put crap onto the movement like fingerprints on the movement and because that'll cause all kinds of problems again more dust will get in there and stick on there and then you get corrosion in the movement and stuff so you got to use these little babies here when you're working on watches um <clears throat> and when you, if you're there's some discussion about what happens when the oil gets old my expiry dates are good on most of this stuff uh 20 i got one that's 20 zero eight twenty twenty um but this st stuff should last longer uh i don't think it matters much for a pocket watch if it's a little tiny bit old but if you're working on a high-end rolex or something make sure that these the oils haven't expired because they will turn into something else over time right so i got another one my uh, d5 is actually 2017 but it's for the keyless it's for the really heavy friction keyless mechanisms and it looks pretty good still so and again because i work a lot on pocket watches it's, it's not a problem um this is a little pocket watch i was i think i made a video on this one i've been working on this one lately and look at that it's turning anyway i got this thing running it has no jewels um in the the pallet fork actually doesn't have jewels it has little pieces of metal uh, and it's and i have to figure out there's a gear here and this is actually the uh this is actually the stem and it goes in like that but when you look at the the keyless mechanism i stick that in that gear can go sideways so i have to figure out how to keep that gear in place but i've already oiled this this watch but I would just like I talked about before I'd put oil here so one mainspring barrel center wheel so I'd be using the red oil red oil red oil uh, probably the blue oil and the blue oil and then I'd put that that uh, this uh, Mobius 9415 right there I'd, and I've done it already I put a dab on the little feet of the escapement and that would reduce the friction there as well so this is my video on oiling. I hope you uh, learned something from it. I'm not sure if you have, but um, I did a lot of studying on, you know, on what oils to use and where to use them, and a whole lot of oil research. Um, uh, it's there's a lot of opinion about it, but basically, the thicker oil or oil for the more friction, and the thinner oil for less friction, and that's the math on it. And buy very good oils, and the ones I showed you today are the, all the oils you'll ever need. I don't think there's any other oil you need. Um, and that's my video on oiling. So I'll see you later. Thank you very much. And I made this video for a gentleman who said, Hey, where do you put oil on a watch? And I said, oh, Okay, I might as well make a video. What the heck? I'll use my new 922 camera. It actually zooms really nicely. I'll show you. I'll show you. Look at this. See if I can zoom. Look at that. Oh my God. Oh my God. God, that's my uh, David Letterman impersonation or impression. And there's the hairspring. Let's see if I can zoom a little bit more here. Can I zoom more? Let me see. I got any more? More? Oh my! Oh, look at that! Look at that! So that's pretty cool. That shows you this this uh, pocket watch and and the escapement with the two pieces of metal sticking out of the pallet fork instead of having jewels, because back when they made this watch, they couldn't afford jewels. Actually, that's not why. Anyway, if you believe it, then you didn't turn the video off quick enough. Thank you very much, and I'll talk to you later.